Very good evening. You're watching the India Development Debate. I'm Tamanna Anamdar, welcoming you on the show on a day when the story, the only story in India and across the world is the spread of the COVID-19 that has literally frozen businesses, communities and economies in fear. More and more countries are locking down, locking down their border, locking down schools, malls, pubs, restaurants in an attempt to stop the spread. There are two key angles we're looking at this evening. One, how we can protect the economy from COVID-19, how markets are reacting and whether India is testing enough so that our numbers are accurate on those infected. For the markets though, there is no respite from the virus. Central bank action and comforting words and promises from governments is doing nothing to stop the fall. The Dow Jones plunged 12% in opening trade, forcing a halt. It's currently trading about 6.5%, 7% down, which is being considered a recovery. In India, another bad day for markets that were hoping for a rate cut announcement from the RBI. What has come instead is monetary action to ensure an adequate supply of dollars and liquidity. But will that be enough? Joining me for more on this tonight are Sunil Subramaniam, MD and CEO of Sundaram Mutual, Madan Sabnavis, Chief Economist Care Ratings, Swaminathan Iyer, Consulting Editor, ET Now, also joining us on the show. A quick programming um, uh, update. You are going to hear from Manish Chokhani ahead on India Development uh, Debate as well, who will be telling us how he thinks the situation will pan out. So uh, let's uh, start. Uh, with what we are seeing today, Swami, let me begin with you. We had a hurriedly called press conference by the Reserve Bank of India. Uh, I attended it as well. I asked uh, the Governor, Shakti Kanta Das, today what his assessment is of the impact on the economy. Uh, there is a, a survey now done by CARE, in fact, which says we could see a half percent hit to the GDP. Do you think that it will get worse before it gets better? It will depend on how long the coronavirus takes to come under control. If it comes under control within two months, then RBI governor may be right. If it takes six months, I'm afraid the hit is going to be much more. And if like the Spanish flu it takes a year, it is going to be an absolute economic catastrophe. So as of now, I would say to say a hit of 0.5% of GDP is the most optimistic thing that you can possibly predict. Assuming that we get over this within two months, I am afraid I am not an optimist. I would expect it to last much longer. I would take India to take a very big hit. I will not be surprised if GDP growth goes down to 3% or let us see. I mean, let us not speculate. Let us see how long it takes to get this under control. We are in new territory. We know nothing about this territory and we, can, we are groping in the dark. We can only cross our fingers and hope for the best. Uh, you know, let me go across to Madan, Madan Sabnavis and, you know, uh, your uh, take really on how the Indian economy can respond. And uh, just to be sure, and I'll play out for you what the RBI governor said in uh, response to that question of mine. Um, just to be sure, it's still early days to assess. But a, a survey of CEOs has said that they think the hit could be as high as half a percent. No, absolutely. Actually, as what Swami was also saying, I think it all depends upon how deep rooted is this particular spread of the virus and for how long does it last. Now, as of now, it's more in the initial phases, I would tend to think, and the industries which have been affected directly are things like uh, tourism, your travel, hospitality aviation these are the industries which have def definitely taken a hit directly and we have seen supply chains getting distorted in industries like say pharmaceuticals automobiles electronics now i think it's become a bit more serious because earlier when we had evaluated it, it was looking more in terms of what are we getting from china and in case the supply chain is disrupted what exactly what are the alternatives which are there for us but today it looks like that it's straight across the european continent and i think european union is one of the major trading partners of india and therefore we can see a lot of distortions taking place uh, in both the manufacturing as well as the service sectors so assuming that i mean that when we're talking of half percent at least a half percent fall in gdp i think it's just assuming that in the next quarter or so that is by q1 of 2000 uh, 2021 this issue will be behind us it will be a case of recuperation where there's some additional spending coming from the government so on and so forth but definitely the, the signals don't look good enough as of today it's only going to go downwards how much downwards is of course depends upon how widespread this uh, virus is 
Um, you know, uh, let me get in a view uh, over here also once more, uh, Swami, in terms of the policy measures that uh, have not been seen so far. We've seen the Fed respond. We've seen central banks across the world respond. Today, markets were hoping for, you know, uh, up to half a basis points of rate cuts. We're holding our horses uh, as of now and waiting for the MPC. Maybe we'll see something early next week. Do you think cutting rates aggressively will be a bomb in these troubled times? Doesn't give a damn about interest rates. The coronavirus doesn't give a damn about the fiscal deficit. This is driven by fear. It is not a monetary phenomenon and it cannot be combated by monetary medicine. It cannot be combated by fiscal medicine. First and foremost, please just treat it as a medical emergency, a human emergency. If you can tackle the human and medical part of it, then the economic part of it will come back. If you are unable to tackle the human and medical part of it, the economy is going to go for a six. Please don't kid yourself that fiddling around with the exchange rate or money supply or fiscal deficit can fix something when you are unable to cope medically with what is an enormous challenge. In Sunil Subramanian and some, you know, commentary of Indian markets. Indian markets have, uh, I think, uh, caught the flu. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's 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 in a bad shape. Uh, there was some hope from, uh, you know, the RBI, but like Swami says, that may give very temporary relief. You're seeing U.S. markets right now with 7% down is a recovery, uh, the way that we're looking at it. What is the outlook? Does this all depend on where the spread of this disease goes? And remember, we're with 114 cases right now in India, much lesser than everyone else relatively. So I think that there are two, three things. I broadly agree with what um, Swami and uh, Madan have been saying, but I just want to make a couple of points which are very relevant from a market perspective. So first thing first is the markets are generally a lead indicator of the economy and the recent correction in the markets, while it is liquidity driven, also gives the harbinger of the time to come that there is going to be an economic correction. That's point number one. The point number two, which I'd like to stress on, is that uh, Madan mentioned this about CEOs talking about the supply disruption. I have a slightly different opinion here. I think the fear of supply disruption was there a month or two ago. But you see, China is one of those countries which has recovered fastest. And what news we are hearing from corporates is that the Chinese supply disruption is getting set right. And in a month or so, they should be back on track. But at the same time, the Indian economy's impact will be a demand destruction driven because tourism, entertainment, travel, airlines, obviously all of those are going to get affected, malls are going to get shut down. So there is definitely going to be an economic impact, but I expect it more to be on a demand side rather than a supply side. Then coming back to the market scenario, I however believe that a rate cut would actually help the markets. I agree with Swami that monetary stimulus may not matter to the coronavirus or to the economy, but to the markets, that spurge of liquidity, I think will be a trigger because if you notice right through this phase, uh, domestic in new institutions have been buyers in the markets. It's been FIIs who've been sellers. And I think even within FIIs, it's been the ETFs, which have basically retail investors abroad putting in money into ETFs, which are being pulling out. So where I'm coming from is that this $700 billion of monetary stimulus that the Fed has announced, in addition to the rates going to near zero, yes, immediately the reaction hasn't been positive for the market, but over a period of time, it has no other choice but to go to the stock market because gold has risen to all-time high levels, unsustainable, uh, fixed income already gone to negative, maybe US is just a step away from being negative. So money pouring in, the basically the three big asset classes which take it up, right, are the fixed income, gold and equity. So I believe that this money will ultimately find its way to equity and within that to safer equities. So that brings me to my point that even a half percent GDP destruction in India, a correction, would, because the world over is expected to be anywhere upwards of one to one and a half percent, so you assume that a three and a half percent world is going to go down to two percent, and India, which is about five, may go down to four and a half, we're still going to grow at double the rate of the world. 
that added to the fact that i think the government so far has done a wonderful job in locking down cities locking down international passengers in india quarantining them and controlling the disease i am touching wood right now i hope this sustains and that if india remains relatively free and the the corona virus cases remain around the hundreds and don't explode into the thousands and the tens of thousands then india is actually in a relatively a better position because thanks to the fact that exports are only about 20% of the indian gdp we are not that interconnected as an economy to the world so i would still say that a 4 to 4.5% gdp growing india with the corona virus under control and with domestic liquidity there is still 8000 crores of sip inflows coming into mutual funds month on month until last month's data we saw there has been no uh, let up in fact there was a, a rise in inflows last time and i am telling you the first few weeks of this month at least at our fund house we are only seeing a gentle rise in flows month over month so these factors make me slightly more optimistic uh, than um, you know madan and uh, swami in terms of the markets and i believe that yes there could be more pain to come but if you are willing to wait out the next 3 6 months one year right i think a year from now the stock markets could easily return to you 15 to 20% because of a massive correction that's happened so i believe that this is the time that investors must stay invested must not panic and take out their money and if they were looking to stagger their investment i would say put it in now there's been a strong deep correction you might see a little more erosion in your capital but nobody ever caught the bottom just right and i think if you allocate round about this time i think a year from now 3 years from now 5 years from now you'll be enjoying some of the best returns from the capital market so i'd like to take a slightly longer term view and say the recent correction is actually an opportunity for uh, retail investors yes of course they shouldn't be directly going and buying stocks they should be putting their money into mutual funds where expert fund managers can diversify and add value been a great experience sunil so far for retail investors and that that worry is there and the fact is that everyone is worried but you know your optimism on the economy was shared by the governor as well let me just play out for you uh, that that question that uh, you know i asked uh, rbi governor shaktikant das uh, today at the press conference uh, where uh, the focus was on how the economy can really heal itself at a time of coronavirus and you mentioned a figure of 0.4 to 1.5% on the global economy do, do we have any number in mind right now and i understand this will change as the situation evolves uh, but to your mind what is the impact we can look at you see we were, we uh, that's what i said we are making an uh, you know we are estimating it as and when the mpc meeting is held we will uh, give out the numbers our estimate and uh, so far as indian economy is concerned uh, i think uh, uh, the fact that india is rel- relatively insulated from the you know global value chain to that extent the impact on india will be less but india is integrated is you know integrated to the global economy so there will be some impact we are evaluating it and we will announce it uh, when we hold the policy meeting mpc meeting we will announce it at that time all right so so there is there is a hope that we will be insulated relatively so i mean i want your take on this because remember on the other side we have crude plunging to below 40 dollars a barrel and yes the government has quickly tried to mop that up by increasing excise duties uh, and uh, you know put some of that kitty in its pocket at this point because i don't know how this dis- disinvestment plan is going to work out right now but that advantage is there Do you think that that's going to tide us through? Do you share the optimism we heard from Governor Das? In every single recession, you get a collapse of commodity prices, including oil prices. The idea, therefore, that every recession is a lovely, lovely time when you know prices come down. I'm sorry, a recession is a terrible, terrible time. A sharp fall in oil prices is not a sign of yippee hooray. A sharp sign of oil prices is oh my God, things are really bad. Uh, let me take it beyond this this is not just a short fall in the oil price there is a deliberate attempt on the part of russia and saudi arabia to say we are going to now allow the market find its own level and in the process we want to break the american shale industry which had come up and the american shale industry requires an oil price of 40 to 50 dollars to survive 
So these guys want to grind down that industry and kill it. If they do that, there are massive bankruptcies in America. There are massive bankruptcies in all the oil supply chain, including pipelines, including seismic surveys, everything else. The pain then spreads entirely to the financial sector. Please remember, we are now talking as though it's only a medical issue. If this continues for some time, a very large number of companies that are on the brink are going to go over the brink. If this continues for more than two, three months, what is starting as a medical emergency will become a financial emergency as well. So it's all very well to say, if you buy right now, you may make a lot of money. And that would be true if you get a quick recovery within two, three months. If, on the other hand, this escalates into a financial emergency, it will be the worst possible time to buy. So unfortunately, in the market, there are never any 100% guarantees this way or that way. But there are considerable risks at this point of time in assuming that there will be no financial fallout. My fear is that there will be a very substantial fallout. Many, many more companies will go bust. Can you imagine what that does to the banking system? I mean, already everybody is on the edge of the NPA problem. You've seen Yes Bank go down. You've seen the price of Indus Indus tumbling down because of fearing that that is going to be the next domino that falls. <clears throat> what happens everywhere else in the financial sector? And if that is the condition in the financial sector, who is going to finance the recovery? So I would say at this point of time, the situation is unknown. If you are an optimist and you are betting on a two-month recovery, please go ahead and do it. But please understand that you are gambling. Please understand you could lose all your money doing that. Neil, you want to respond to that? Before I get in, uh, yeah. you know, get, 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 get a word in from Madan, I think you, you should respond to that because, you know, that, that's the big question right now, uh, isn't it? Maybe, maybe wait a bit before you get optimistic. Uh, not really. See, I was talking about waiting a year, three years, five years. I agree with Swami that two months is a bet, is a gamble. But I don't think any investor in the stock market, a speculator is one who comes in for two months. And investors basically looking at wealth creation over the medium term. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity. While the risk that Swami lay out can play out, there are counters to that. To the extent that today the shale gas scenario in the US is dramatically different from what it was a few years ago. Today, earlier, it was only the private equity owned shale gas players who had gone bust in the previous boom bust cycle and they had gone to private equity hands and hence they were at risk and then they needed $60 to survive. But today, Chevron, Exxon, BP Shell, all the biggies have come into the shale gas industry with five year plans and any such uh, uh, deep correction in oil to $20, $25 would mean these smaller companies would be under pressure, but they would be most likely be acquired by the Exxon Mobiles and this because they have a longer term commitment to the game. So I think the oil dynamics are very unpredictable. I think the, 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 the fact that there will be consolidation in the shale gas, I agree that Russia and Saudi might be thinking of bringing the US shale gas, but I'm saying there are counter forces at play. While in the next two, three months, yes, the situation is uncertain. But like I said, nobody ever caught the bottom just right. So for a longer term investor with a three year outlook and allocation at this time, three years from now, I don't think the coronavirus effect is going to last for three years. I don't think economic recession are going to last for three to five years. So I think if you keep a longer term perspective with the point that you with a diversified portfolio in the hands of a expert mutual fund manager would buy things at the right time and accumulate it, I think it's a good time to invest. It's not a good time to speculate with a two-month view. There I'm in agreement with Swami. But for an investor with a three to five year outlook, I think you can't get better time. And if you look at the Sensex, right, over a lifetime. Yeah, most kind of most people are most people are, are, are looking at in, in horror right now, collective horror at the level of capital erosion. Uh, so, so, so that's that's the mood. Arnab Das is with me on the phone line, head of uh, emerging markets uh, at uh, Invesco. Arnab, um, you know, just uh, any optimism you see, any silver lining you see in the way uh, Dow has recovered, as in it's still about eight percent down, but at least um, you know the way that it flatlined pretty much it opened. There has been a recovery from there. Uh, what do you see behind that? Um, well, I think there, there are two schools of thought, in a way, out there. One is that the Fed, um, by uh, having repeatedly in, engaged in these emergency rate cuts and liquidity positions, 
um, is fueling this sense of panic that's already out there that um, and also this kind of idea that what do they know that we don't know that might be something lurking in the financial system uh, or elsewhere in the economy that is uh, about to drop. Um, the other school of thought, uh, of course, is that um, the underlying issue here is that the public policy response to the coronavirus pandemic is recessionary, right? Locking down um, entire societies and economies to stop the virus in its tracks uh, is clearly causing, you know, sharp drops in sort of real-time indicators of activity, right? If you look at um, traffic patterns or restaurants or, you know, mobile phone uh, usages as a way of seeing where, how much people are moving around, uh, all of these things are showing steep um, double-digit drops in activity uh, in many Western economies, as took place in China uh, during the height uh, of its epidemic. Um, so I think that's really what's going on here is that the market is adjusting and repricing and the Fed is trying to cushion that repricing and trying to keep the financial system uh, liquid and well supplied with cash because, uh, or you know, with, with short term uh, instruments, uh, because the corporate sector is going to have some cash flow issues, um, the household sector and particularly the small and medium business sector. Uh, is going to have some severe financing constraints. Um, China went through the same thing, right? Um, what they did was suspend a lot of contracts through force majeure kind of provisions um, in order to keep everything stable. You can't really do that so easily in the West, so you have to liquefy the financial system. So I, I think it's the way to think about this is that there is a kind of a panic, if you like, in the real economy, uh, and that's what makes this so challenging. This is not a normal... Uh, kind of recessionary circumstance that we're used to, right, where the Fed um, has been tight, or other central bank, as the case may be, has been tightening monetary policy because demand is too strong, um, and then, you know, sort of serially killing the expansion in order to keep inflation under control. No, on the contrary, what's happening here is that people are pulling in their horns significantly and are being asked or told uh, to varying degrees of uh, of enforcement by different governments to do so in order to save their lives. And so that's leading to uh, a kind of big shift in, in, in how people are, are living and consuming, right? So they're moving away from discretionary purchases and stocking up on basic necessities because they're, they're afraid that for several weeks or maybe even a couple of months, they're not going to be able to do anything else. Um, and so... How are you looking, how are you looking at India right now? How are you looking at India right now, of course, going through its own uh, uh, extreme pain like the rest of the world? But, but relatively, how are you looking at India right now? Um, well, so I think this, at the moment this is still a problem that is primarily um, in, in the West. It's come under control in China and seems to be under control in uh, high-income Asia as well, you know, in Korea and Japan, Singapore and so on. Um, the in in India and some other countries there are you know there's a bit of a rise in cases but it's very hard to know how significant that is because the testing is not that widespread um, so I think at the moment the you know the, the the issue in most you know quote unquote emerging market countries is that there's collateral damage because of the severe tightening in financial conditions that's taking place in global markets rather than direct fallout from the coronavirus pandemic itself. Yeah, that I hope not, but you know, it is a possibility that that, that, that starts to merge in India. Important point. That's an important point, and I want to take that to Madan. So so far, we've been looking at you know uh, Indian stock markets uh, in tandem with what's happening through the world. But as the lockdown, social distancing uh, continues and intensifies, as as businesses are working at lower capacity, as as malls, restaurants are are. You know, malls are shut, restaurants are restricted, uh, social gatherings, etc. are restricted. Do you think that there's going to be a very real impact on businesses and the economy which is yet to come? You know, the cure is going to also harm us. Yes. 
No, absolutely. I think and as the virus spreads and as we have these kind of minor shutdowns becoming major shutdowns, it will be affecting business activity. See, currently it's been limited to a restricted uh, segments and that's what we have uh, seen happening more in the service segment. But as it keeps spreading, we've already heard about lots of organizations saying work from home, which is not really serious because you still continue doing what you're supposed to do. But the real problem will be when the manufacturing units start shutting down. I think that's when there will be a serious problem. And frankly, I think in this kind of a situation, I don't think there is any kind of a solution. Neither monetary policy nor fiscal policy can help. And it's just a case of saying that how far does the, does the virus impact actually last? When does it really recede? And till then, I think whatever is going to be the economic damage is something which we'll have to live with. So I think this is a practical way of looking at it because uh, I, I really don't see any kind of a solution to a health problem which is there. When we had a financial crisis, one could always talk about interventions coming from the central bank or from the government. But right now, I don't think we really have the, the ability. So, so even in case we're talking of the RBI lowering the rates, just like what we saw the Federal Reserve do, I don't think that's had any impact. The markets have not really reacted to it. In fact, I think the market reaction yesterday to the Federal Reserve was more negative because it was felt that the Federal Reserve is running out of ammunition. I think the RBI also realizes this. and therefore is going a bit slow we'll probably wait for the mpc to take a decision because we all expected that the rbi may come up with a rate cut today when when they said there was a press conference being announced but that didn't quite happen so i think even the rbi is watching uh, and, and the, the situation evolve before it really takes a decision right. Yeah, you don't want to spend all your ammunition. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, as I take a very short break, I'm going to take away from the point that this is a very real situation based on which we could see a financial crisis. At the end of the day, what matters is people's health and how our public systems are going to be able to deal with it. Which is why after this very short break, I'm touching upon a, a crucial issue, which is are we testing enough? We have seen relatively fewer numbers of those infected in India is that a function of how few we've actually tested? I'm going to be asking that question after this very short break. I have a panel of experts lined up with me. Also programming reminder, I'm going to play out for you key parts uh, of an interview with Manish Chokhani, a market guru, who's going to tell us about what he thinks we should do in these times of coronavirus. Very short break, we're right back. Don't go away.